How you doing today, guys? This is Alex Gomez, your favorite teacher in the whole world. Today, we're going to be making predictions with experimental probability. Now, just like we did on the video before, uh, when we made predictions with theoretical probability, now we started doing the experiments. Uh, we're still going to be doing cross products like before. It's part over total, and then whatever times they do it, you do the cross products and find it like that. Now, however, we can use two methods, and we're going to go about them. So, first, let's see. When you have information about previous events, you can use that information to predict what will happen in the future. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to happen, but it's a high possibility that it will. If you can throw a basketball into a basket three out of five times, you can predict that you will make six baskets in 10 times, in 10 tries. If you try 15 times, you can expect to make nine baskets, and you can use a proportion to multiply or, or multiply to make the prediction. But how? Well, here we have sample A. It says use a proportion. And we have a statement that says a survey found that eight out of 10 people choose apples as their favorite fruit. If you ask 100 people, how many can you predict that they will choose apples as their favorite fruit? So this a survey, they usually, instead of asking the whole country, they just ask for a small number of people and then multiply it out. In this case, they did it with cross products. So, first of all, you gotta look at the keywords. They found that eight out of, so that's your proportion, that's your initial proportion, right here. Eight out of, which is right here, eight out of 10. Now, if you ask 100 people, that's the number of times you're gonna be doing the experiment and that's, the, that's what you set up on your cross products. Remember, this is part over total. We're still doing part over total. Nothing has changed. Like I said at the beginning of the year, we're gonna be doing part over total almost throughout all seven grade. So, now, you set up your, uh, your cross products. The 100 people goes on the bottom because that's the total number of people that are gonna uh, be asking later on. And X goes right here to find out your prediction. Okay? Now, you simply do cross products, butterflies, whatever you want to call it. So, you will set your equation, so you will have, oh, you can look at this right here. You can do eight times 100, which is 80, 800, sorry, equals to 10 times 10, x is 10x, sorry, 10 times x is 10x. And then we'll just divide by 10 or take away the zero. Or you can look at this. What happened between 10 and 100? Well, it got multiplied by 10. So you must do the same thing to the top. And 8 times 10 equals to 80. We all know how to solve cross products. So that's part of the different world. Now, the other example is how to do it multiplying. And let's look at this example. And this is going to work whenever you have the percent given to you already. Whenever you already have your percent, you can just multiply. How will you find the percent if you're using a proportion? Does anybody know? Well, you take your prediction, which is eight out of 10, and convert that into a decimal and then into a percent. And to do that, you just do top and bottom up. It's too much work for this one, because after you convert to decimal, you have to convert into a percent. Either move the decimal two places to the right or multiply by 100. So that's a lot of work, especially if you're not using a calculator. Now, whenever you're given the percent, like in this problem, it's faster to do it this other way. So it says, the method by using multiplication. Eric's baseball coach calculated that Eric hits the ball 49% of the time. So almost half of the time, he hits it, okay? If Eric receives 300 pitches this season, how many times can you, can Eric predict that he will hit the ball? Well, 49 is really close to 50. So half of 300, it'll be really close to 150. That's a really good prediction. That is actually a really good prediction. Now, how will you do that? Whenever you're given the percent right here, all you have to do is convert that to decimal. And how do we convert percentages to decimal? Move two times to the left. Very good. 
So it'll be point, 0 0.49, which is right here. So convert to decimal and then multiply by the amount, which is 300, and you get 147, which we kind of expect, expect it, right? 150, 147, really close. When you convert to decimal and multiply the amount, that's the actual prediction, 147 times. So just like when we talk about taxes, what percent of it is the same thing. Yeah, to, what did I tell you? Whenever you have com, uh, percent, convert to decimal and multiply. Convert to decimal, multiply. Every time we're talking about percentages, convert to decimal and multiply. That's all we're doing, guys. Now, let's move on. Let's look at the example that we have over here. I think we have two, per, two examples, one of each. On average, 25% of the dogs who uh, go to ABC veterinarian need a rabies booster. So 25% of them need a rabies booster. If 120 dogs visit the veterinary clinic, how many of them will la more likely need a rabies booster? So you can do this two ways, and I'm actually going to show you both ways. I'm going to show you both ways. I'm going to show you both ways. So we're going to use a proportion. In this case, they're not giving you the option to multiply, but I'm gonna show you, you so that you can see that they're the same thing. So, we're gonna set up the proportion. Remember, it's part over total. Part over total. The 100, that's the 100%, I mean the, the, the 100 for the percent, because we're talking about percentages first. So, what goes right here? What's my percent? 25% out of 100%. Then X equal, what's the total number of dogs? 120. 120, that goes right here. Then you do the cross products after you set up your equation. 100 times X is just time, 100X equals to 120 times 25, which is 3,000. Okay? In this case, you can either divide by 100 or just take away the last two zeros, because I already showed you how to do that. So x equals to 30, right here. So out of the 120 dogs that goes to the clinic, you can expect about 30 of them to get the rabies booster. That's just an experiment, okay? It might be, might be 28, maybe 32, 33, but it's still within the range, okay? Now, so for X, we already did is right here, 30 dogs will likely need a rabies booster. How will you do this the other way? How will you do this the other way? I'm gonna do it on uh, red down here. Again, we're given a percent amount. We're given a percent amount. And that percent is right here. That's the multiply uh, way. Convert that percent to decimal. 25% as a decimal is what? 0 0.25 times how many dogs? 120. 120. When you multiply that and this, you also get 30. Now, which one's faster? I think the second one is faster. But you will you just need to remember every time you see a percent, convert to decimal and multiply. That's it. You can forget about the cross products for this type of question. It's way faster. Now, second one. About 90% of y'all, seventh graders, prefer texting to emailing. It's kind of true, right? Y'all don't like email, so you use text, whatever. In a sample of uh, 550 seventh graders, how many would you predict that prefer texting? And this one is given to you as a multiply. And I'm also going to show you the cross products way, so that you can see if the both of them are gonna give you the same answer. 90% as a decimal is 0 0.9. What's my total number of students? Five. Which is right here. And when you multiply those two, you get 495. Point, and you can see that this is not one. It's really close to one. If that would have been one, 
that's would have been 550, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's since a, a little less than one, it has to be less than 550 in this case, which is that is, and it kind of makes sense. Now, can it be uh, 500? Maybe. Can it be 560? No. no, because there's only 550 students. In this case, you just gotta play with it. Now, the cross products way, it'll be the same thing. Part over total, what my percent is? What's the percent? 90. 90 out of 100% equals, what goes on top? X, X over? No, 550. That's what's given on the scenario, right? You do cross products, so you get 100x equals to 49,500. <coughs> and you can either divide by 100 in this case or take out the zeros, because both of them end in zeros, take them away. Well, both of them ended with zero, so you just take them away. And the answer is? Same number. So which one do you like better? Just the multiplication is one step, right? Yes. Now that's only going to work whenever you're given the percent. Because otherwise, if you're looking for the prediction, you will have to set the, the fraction convert the fraction into a decimal, and then convert the decimal into a percent so that you can do that, and you already lost too much time. Any questions? No, sir. That's it for today, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.